What's up guys, welcome to my guide for care pack hard mode. I am now reaching just around about 1000 kills at this boss in the hard mode difficulty and now I figured I am probably in a decent position to make a guide for you guys. Now I just want to stress that this video will say it is for beginners. Now this means beginners to care pack hard mode and not beginners to runescape 3 or pvm. This is not an easy boss, care pack hard mode is a difficult boss and you are going to want some understanding of defensive abilities. Because of that I am going to be linking my defensive ability guide video in the description if you aren't aware of your abilities at all for your defensives or you would need to do a bit of homework then watch that video first it will definitely make it a lot easier when you watch this one anyway with that being said this video will likely be pretty damn long so there will be timestamps in the description if you enjoy if you find it helpful at all then do leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new around here and let's get into this so before we get started on all of the extra stuff, a few bits of things you may want to know about Carapac. Carapac has a normal mode and a hard mode. This guide is specifically going to be talking about the hard mode. Most of the fight is pretty similar to the normal mode. The only big difference is going to be phase 4. We will spend quite a lot of time talking about phase 4. I'm going to be doing this guide in a very low level gear for what you would probably want to recommend for this boss. This is to show you guys that you don't need ridiculously expensive gear or, should I say it, Crypt Blue Mama to be able to do this boss. That being said, I have done this boss a thousand times literally so you will want to be using better gear than me if you do have it if you don't then i would probably recommend working on other bosses until you do anyway but you can definitely do it in the gear i'm going to be using and finally the reason you may want to do hard mode karapak is because he drops the staff of armadillo pieces making karapak a very high value boss with that being said let's move on to talking about the gear I would very highly recommend having the Pontifex Shadow Ring fully upgraded and overcharged before doing Karapak in hard mode. The overcharged version of this ring does give you a passive effect so you can leave it in your bank that prevents the jumping slam ability from stunning you. This makes it a hell of a lot easier to deal with. You can kill this boss without it. I just really wouldn't recommend it. It's not difficult to get this. It doesn't cost that much to overcharge it anymore. The anima is really cheap. So make sure you get this if you can. Not to mention the ring as well having it overcharged also increases increases your drop rate in all of the Elder God Wars bosses, so you definitely want to have it. On screen now is the gear that I used in this video. This is very low level gear for this boss, but it is absolutely possible as you will see me complete the boss in this gear. I'm using Ganodermic Armor so I can take advantage of Animate Dead. This is going to make the fight a lot less punishing while you are learning. I'm only using the Elder Wand and the Elder Orb with very low level perks on them as this is a low level weapon and I wanted to show you guys that it is possible to do so with this gear. I'm using a Ring of Death, which is advised to be using when you are learning any boss. And I'm using a Book of Jazz and then I'm using a Max Cape and a blood amulet of fury i have my rune pouches with me so i can cast any spells that i would need these two runes include smoke cloud animate dead insight fear and exanuate in this video i'll be camping the exanguinate spell in the inventory i have the typical elder overload and super prayer renewal if you have combination potions then you can bring those too i have an adrenaline renewal which i would suggest you have or a super adrenaline potion at the lowest i have vulnerability bombs spiritual prayer potions as i am using a ripper demon with scrolls i have a tier 90 shield which is incredibly important i have a power burst of vitality used for phase four i also have a zamorakian staff which if you have an essence of finality you could pop this in there this is used to reduce the damage that Karapak can deal to you. I have an enhanced Excalibur for an extra bit of healing and I also have a Dragor Mace. I use this and the Excalibur for my bladed dive. Finally, I have an HSR, but you could just bring any Luck Ring or if you don't have a Look of the Dwarves, just don't bring any Luck Ring whatsoever. The rest of the inventory is just food. I would probably use half brews and half blue blubber jellyfish. I use blue blubber jellyfish because you don't want to lose adrenaline in phase four. If you use solid food like rock tails, you're going to be eating through it a lot. You are going to eat on phase four, absolutely. And that is going to cost you a lot of adrenaline which could get you killed blue blubbers are recommended on screen now is the setup that i normally use when doing carapac so if you do have better gear this is the sort of thing you want to look towards of course you can use range and you can use melee for this i may make a range guide in the near future so let me know in the comments if you want that i do have a need to practice a little bit more of that first with the high level gear there's a few things that i wanted to mention as they are incredibly helpful and definitely worth mentioning cinderbane gloves are an absolute brilliant item here and if you do have them they are a must they do a hell of a lot of damage as carapac is is poisonable and you want to be using a weapon poison as well i am using a grimoire because i use the staff of armadil and i can't stress enough how good crit bloom armor is here as it does reduce the damage you take by a hell of a lot the rest is pretty much just gear upgrades my essences of finality have the armadil battle staff for the staff of armadil spec and the second one is a zamorak staff 
but in the essence of finality. Everything else shown here is just upgrades in comparison to the previous gear. If you wanted to, you can absolutely use power armor, so elite tectonic or regular tectonic if you would like to, but it will be more difficult and I just prefer to use grip loom here, especially since I am usually streaming when I do so. One last mention before we do get started, you can get a Dragonkin Slayer task to increase the damage that you can deal to Kerapak. It does work, you will need to have the Slayer helmet on your Anachronia stand though, and this will improve your kill times by so much. It is incredibly helpful. If you can do this, I would suggest you do. I can't showcase this in the video because I'm incredibly lazy and don't have the Slayer helmet stand. So it is what it is. It is what it is. I'll get it soon, I promise. Okay, so pre-fight things that you're going to want to do. One, you're going to want to use the Weapon Poison plus, plus, plus. This is going to increase your damage by a lot, as it will stack with your Cinderbane Gloves if you have them. But if not, it is also going to allow you to Poison Karapak. This is going to be a massive damage buff. You want to use it. You can improve this by using Quarm Incense Sticks as well if you wanted to. These do get quite pricey, but I do use them personally. I think they're absolutely great. I personally also use Lantadime Incense Sticks to increase the duration of my overloads. And then I also use Spirit Weed Incense Sticks, as this will allow your Ripper Demon to output more damage. Speaking of which, you are going to want to have a Ripper Demon with scrolls summoned before you enter the fight. If you're using a Fractured Staff of Armadil, you would swap to a Calgarian Demon, but otherwise, just use a Ripper Demon. And you want to use this over a Yak because the damage it provides is going to be very important, especially on Phase 4. You probably could apply Penance Powder if you wanted to, to help out with that, but you don't necessarily need to, in my opinion. And also, you want to check that your Rune Pouches are full and make sure that your books are charged as well. When you're ready, charge up your adrenaline head to the boss arena. I am assuming that most of you have got a normal mode kill as you do need to do that to fight hard mode. So that being said, you can use the Wars Retreat portal to get there. If you haven't killed normal mode yet, the easiest way to get there is to follow what I'm doing on screen, which is going into the grouping system, finding Karapak in the list, making a group, pressing ready, and then teleporting to the boss. Get a kill in normal mode, and then you have access to the portal at Wars Retreat. Okay, so phase one to phase three are all exactly the same, except for a couple of varying differences, which we'll talk about, but are really not that difficult to deal with in comparison to each other phase. These are the three phases that you're gonna find a lot easier, in my opinion. Now, before you start the fight, make sure to use your aura, which I am gonna be using a supreme runic accuracy on this gear, but if you have higher level gear, I would suggest using the maniacal aura. If you are using low level gear, maniacal may make the fight harder though, as you are gonna take increased damage, Phase 4 may just destroy you. If you're in Cripplum though, Maniacal it up. It's going to help with your kill speed a lot. So what exactly do you need to look out for in Phases 1 to 3? Well, Karapak has three main mechanics during the fight, and you are going to deal with them in very specific ways each and every time. Phase 1 to 3 are very repetitive, but that's great because it makes teaching you guys and also you learning quite a lot easier. However, before we even get onto the mechanics, there is one more mechanic that we do need to talk about first that is important throughout the entire fight and that is going to be the Time Warp ability. Time Warp is the extra action button that you're going to get during the Karapak fight. It is a big square yellow button, and you can't miss it. If you are missing it, though, then you can actually move it around in the user interface settings. So head into that and make sure you can put it in a place where it is nice and easily accessible. It is also worth mentioning that you can also keybind this as well, if that is how you would prefer to do it. Okay, so this is how Time Warp works. Time Warp is going to be available from Phase 2 until the end of the fight. It is going to be a massive part of what makes doing this in low-level gear possible, but it is is also something you can take advantage of to increase your DPS and to increase your survivability in phase four. You are going to need to learn how to use time warp. It can feel overwhelming at first, but you will be able to get used to it with practice. Okay, so what exactly does time warp do? What time warp is going to do is as soon as you click on it, it is going to take a snapshot of your player's life points, ability cooldowns, adrenaline, and prayer points, and your character's location. Now, it is going to remember all of this from when you click that button. After 10 seconds, it is going to expire and put your character back to exactly how you were when you pressed that button. This means that everything you do after pressing it will be basically completely free to use meaning any health or damage that you take is going to be forgotten about unless you die. Any prayer points, any adrenaline you use, and any cooldowns you use, except for the Staff of Armadale spec, is going to be reversed back to normal as well. 
This means that you can use Time Warp and then you can use the Sunshine ability and then fire off any abilities that you can. And as soon as you go back in time, you will have Sunshine available again. You will have all of your adrenaline back and any life points and the location that you're at is going to be exactly where you press that button. Time Warp is incredibly strong and it is really important that you use this properly. The main times you are going to use this is going to be when you're wanting to use Sunshine and during Phase 4 to take advantage of your defense abilities at the best situation. So in short, press Time Warp, use whatever abilities you want to be able to reuse again very soon. And then when you go back in time, you will be able to use them all once again or use it as a way to get 100% adrenaline back nice and easy. Now that you know what Time Warp is, I will be explaining how you will use it as we get to the points where you would be using it. Okay, so the mechanics for real this time. We are going to be talking about three mechanics to deal with during the first three phases. The rest of it is going to be auto attacks. However, if you use the Zamorak Staff Special Attack combined with Animate Dead and using full Ganodermic Armor or full Crypt Bloom, you can just camp Soul Split for this entire first three phases. This will depend on your dps though so if you are still losing health then do use protect from magic as of course the more damage you deal the more health you're going to heal back the ideal situation of course would be to soul split flick between auto attacks okay so when you start the fight head down to the end of the room where you see me going now as you get far enough long Karapak will aggro on you and he will start the fight you want to start the fight out with a sunshine followed by an adrenaline potion and then with a vulnerability bomb and applying smoke cloud this can be a little bit tricky to practice, but the best way to do it is to drop your sunshine, right click with a vulnerability bomb and drop it as Karapak appears, and then use the smoke cloud immediately before doing anything else. From here, it is all just DPS until the first mechanic, which is called Shatter. You will know Karapak is using the ability Shatter because he will yell, I'll tear right through you and raise his staff into the air before slamming it down. If he slams this down and you don't deal with it correctly, he is going to stun you and then put a rift behind you and it's going to deal magic damage from where the rift is through to your player. The easiest way to deal with this mechanic is super easy, nice and simple and completely nullifies it. Walk underneath Karapak as he says, I'll tear right through you. If you are underneath Karapak when he slams his staff into the ground, there will be no rift, there will be no damage, there will be no stun. You can do this every single time as long as you don't fail it once and then phase if you fail it and then phase this will no longer work and you will have to deal with the mechanic properly if you do miss this mechanic what you want to do is go ahead and kill the actual rift that is left on the side of the map be in a direct line from where your character was to the furthest wall that it can reach kill that off otherwise it will leave typeless damage ticks on your character throughout the entire fight kill this off then get back onto Karapak. but again the ideal situation is to just walk under him and completely nullify this in time mechanic it's worth mentioning probably that if you do mess up this on the first time around if he is going to do the mechanic again before he phases into phase two or phase three then you can fix this by walking under him on the second time as long as you do it right the second time before phasing then you're okay to continue using the method to deal with the mechanic the next ability is called Jumping Slam. Karapak will go into the air and he will say, you will break beneath me, or he will say, I will put you in your place. While he is in the air, he is going to do an animation of bringing his staff of armadil backwards and then back towards the front. Once this animation is complete, he will dive on the player and he will deal high melee damage. He will stun you if you don't have the Pontifex Shadow Ring upgraded unless you deal with this mechanic properly. If you stay in melee distance of Karapak after he has dived on top of you, you will take continuous melee damage over time this does add up very quickly and it does increase in damage over time as well so you can die to this if you don't move away quick enough it is also worth mentioning that Karapak will take 50% less damage while he is on the ground the ideal way to deal with this mechanic is to wait until his staff goes back towards the front and then as he does this press escape this will cause Karapak to dive where your character was and you will completely avoid it if you time this correctly you will take no damage and also your escape will not go on cooldown. You can use Surge as well, but Escape works a lot better as it doesn't put you out of range of Karapak. One thing you can do once you have a bit more practice is make sure before you use Escape, you walk underneath where Karapak is. This way, he will land on the same tile that he started the attack on. And then when you get to phase two and phase three, it will mean that he will not create a clone for this attack. I will talk about clones once we've covered the next mechanic. So with this mechanic, the ideal thing is the second he goes into the air, keep an eye on his staff. And as he starts to bring it back forward, you want to be pressing Escape. Once you've escaped, just go back to doing damage on Karapak. He will go back into the air 
two more times and he will do the exact same thing. You want to use escape for the other two times as well to ensure you avoid the damage that he is going to deal to you. If you do mistime this, he is going to land on top of you. You want to move away from him immediately, otherwise you are going to take damage over time from melee hits and this can kill you very quickly. Move away, get out of distance and then go back to doing damage once he goes back into the air and try again. If you don't have double escape, it is going to be on cooldown for the second time, so you're going to want to make sure you just move away the second he lands on top of you for the other two dives. What I will suggest you do is pray protect from melee as you are about to escape. This way, even if you do mess it up, you're not going to take much damage compared to if you didn't have it on. It is just a safe thing to do. I still do it even with Crib Bloom. Chuck your protect from melee on when he goes into the air and then escape back. Once you ensure you're not going to get any melee damage, go back to Soul Split and get yourself some health back. After he has done three dives in total, he is going to go back to using regular auto attacks and you want to prepare for his third mechanic, Lightning Strike. Once Karapak completes the jumping slams, he is going to do a few more auto attacks and then yell, witness the power of the staff. He'll raise the staff into the air and summon a lightning wall. There is going to be one lightning wall for each phase that you are on. For example, in phase one, you will have one lightning wall to deal with. In phase two, you will have two lightning walls at the same time. And in phase three, you will have three lightning walls at the same time. This gets a little more difficult to deal with, but there is easy ways to deal with it. And I'm going to, of course, tell you how to do that. First of all, don't panic. It's terrifying, but it's not that big of a deal. The walls will be coming across the entire arena. You cannot avoid them unless you deal with them properly. They go in a straight line from one side of the arena to the other, and the way that they come through are completely random. However, it is probably worth mentioning that the wall in phase one will be in the exact same place in phase two, and then so forth in phase three. The walls from phase one and phase two will be in the same place as they were previously while they are in phase three. The best way to deal with this is to just surge through them. Using things like surge and bladed dive to get through the walls will give you zero damage if you don't get hit by them and it will mean that you don't have to waste any defensive abilities this is just the best way to do it however once you have three walls it can get pretty tricky what i would suggest you do on phase three or phase two as well is just use Reflect and Debilitate on Karapak. If you use both of these on Karapak, you will take very little damage, especially if you're using Animate Dead as well, when you run through these walls. Still try and use Surge to get through them to practice, all that sort of good stuff, but use Reflect, use Debilitate the moment all three of the walls appear, and then make your way through the walls the best you can. If you do get hit by them, don't panic. It's not going to kill you as long as you have Reflect and Debilitate on. If you aren't using Reflect and Debilitate, these can hit anywhere between 2,000 and 4,000 damage. They are typeless damage, so using Protection Prayers will do nothing. You can use Resonance, you can use Disruption Shield. These will block one tick of damage, but if you get caught in the Lightning, you can die very quickly. It is worth mentioning that the Lightning looks a little bit different than how the actual hitbox counts. You will see the Lightning, and it will look like it is only one tile wide. It is not. It is about two tiles wide and there is one tile in front of the wall that you cannot see basically the lightning that you can see is the back of the wall and if you get too close to it from the front you're going to get hit so you want to surge a little bit early otherwise you could still get hit and take a lot of damage personally even when i'm dealing with one or two walls i still use resonance before i surge through the wall because that way if i do accidentally mistime this or just mess it up completely it is going to block one instance of damage from the wall which is definitely not a bad thing like i said ideally the best thing to do is be able to surge through these without actually screwing it up and not getting hit but the safest way to do this is use reflect and debilitate on Karapak and then get through the walls while keeping your shield on as i said you'll have one wall for phase one two for phase two three for phase three once you have dealt with all three of the walls you'll be moving on to phase four okay so all the mechanics have been covered except for phase four now few important things to mention before we move on because these are all going to apply to the previous phases and you do need to know this information. That is going to be one, when you want to use your time warps and two, what are the clones I mentioned earlier for each of phase two and phase three. Well, time warp you ideally want to use at the beginning of each phase immediately as soon as you get access to it. This will allow you to drop a sunshine and get out way more DPS through that fight. You are going to want to have access to it again when phase three starts. So if it does come off cooldown and you are close to phasing, I would suggest us hang and onto it until you phase. However, if you're only halfway through a phase and time warp is available and you can reuse sunshine again and you've expired out of your other sunshine, you may as well drop another one and get through the DPS quicker. Otherwise, the fight could take ages. Take advantage of time warp how you seem fit, but ideally you want to drop a sunshine with time warp at the beginning of phase two and phase three. Beginning of phase two and phase three, use the time warp. 
drop your sunshine, then use any damaging abilities that you can. Limitless is hella handy at this point. And then once time warp expires and you get your adrenaline back, just go into doing as much damage as you can. Again, if you're only halfway through the fight and you do have access to sunshine again, use a second time warp, drop the sunshine and get back into DPS. But keep in mind, as you get closer to phase three and phase four, you are going to want your time warp available. So don't use it too close to phasing. As for the clones during phase two and phase three, what this means is every mechanic that you had in the previous phases, so phase one, if you had the shatter and you didn't do it correctly in phase two there will be a clone of Kerapak that will do a exact same like location and everything of that shatter that you missed meaning that there will be two shatters casted at the same time in phase two and then in phase three there will be three the clones will be in the exact same location facing the exact same way that they were in the previous phase however if you do deal with the shatter mechanic properly and walk underneath Kerapak there won't be a clone because there was nothing for him to do in the first place the same goes for the dive and slide as well. In phase two and phase three, there will be clones of Kerapak that will dive in the exact locations that he did the dive in the previous phase. However, if you do stand underneath Kerapak before he does the dive and he dies on the exact same tile, there won't be any clones during the next phase. If you do have the clones, don't panic. Just keep your protection from melee on. You'll be absolutely fine. Okay, so with all of that done, that's all of everything from phase one to phase three that you need to know. We are now moving on to phase four where it gets difficult. Okay, phase four. Let's start off by saying expect to die here quite a lot while learning. Unless you are very experienced in defense abilities, you're going to die here a few times. It can get stressful. Just take breaks if you need to and then come back at a later time. Don't throw yourself at this until you hate the game and want to quit. Just keep practicing when you have the patience for it. With that amazing advice out of the way, you are going to die here. I died a lot here. Trust me, you're not on your own. Phase four works like this. There is going to be three clones of Kerapak in each side of the room and then the main care pack is going to fly off to the far room by the exit and just stand there untargetable however there is also going to be three clones of the player yourself attacking each of these clones having one each these three clones of you are also incredibly important so you have three clones of care pack attacking three clones of yourself and then you have the main care pack on attackable and you have to deal with everything else going on the main care pack will always be attacking you throughout this fight the main care pack is using revenge and as any of the clones die the damage that he will deal to you is going to increase so expect to get hit like a truck towards the end of phase four this is why defensive abilities are incredibly important here so as soon as you get into phase four this is what you want to do you want to jump into one of the furthest away clones and use a vitality potion and then immediately jump to the opposite clone as you see me do here and then move between the first two Kerapak clones that you are near. The second you do this, you want to time warp and use sunshine. If you have a staff of armadil, you may not want to sunshine. I just use tsunami and staff spec, but without the staff of armadil, I would highly suggest using sunshine. As soon as you use your sunshine here, you want to build up your adrenaline and do as much damage as you can to the first clone. You want to get this down to around about 10,000 health. If you can, before this time warp expires, use Limitless and then use Devotion to get one free use of Devotion before the time warp expires. Do not use Devotion after the time warp expires just yet. However, if you can use it before the time warp does expire with Limitless, then get it in there. At this point, you will need to use your own common sense to decide if you need to put a shield on and use defensives. Each fight at this point is going to be different depending on how much damage you are dealing and how much damage you are taking. There is not going to be a set rotation or decision on whether you need to use defensives at this point. Your goal now is to get the first clone down to around about 10,000 health and then immediately move on to the second clone that is in range of your sunshine and get that down to around about 10,000 health as well. At this point in lower level gear, your time warp will be back and you want to use time warp and then use devotion kill both of the low clones off as this will extend your devotion timer. Now, the reason you use the vitality potion on the first clone was to double its health points. When you use the vitality potion on a clone and then jump to another one, the initial clone that you vitality potted on will keep its 20,000 health. This means that the third clone will still be dealing with your third clone as well. That way it is not attacking you. Okay, so you've lowered both of the health of the two Kerapak clones near your sunshine. Low level gear, you would use time warp, devotion, and kill both of them, which would extend your devotion, and then you would head over to the third clone. In higher level gear, your time warp is likely not ready yet, and you just want to use devotion, kill both of the clones off to extend it, and then make your way over to the third Kerapak clone. Once you are here, you're going to want to take advantage of using devotion again. As you did time warp, you will still have it again. If you didn't time 
time warp because you're in high level gear, you'll be fine. You still have the extended version. Kill this clone off as fast as possible and then make your way to Carapac. From here on out, we are just looking at using the low level gear that I have here. And then in high level gear, you'll just have to adjust. Once you've made your way over here, make sure to use your vulnerability bomb on the clones and then do as much damage as you can. You want to kill this clone off as fast as you possibly can. You are definitely going to be using reflect and debilitate and resonance here probably as much as you can. Ideally, you want to be using Time Warp with Devotion every time if possible. So if you can use Reflect and Debilitate first, wait for your Time Warp to come back off cooldown and then use Devotion, then do so. But if you can't and you really need to use Devotion now, then just use it and then use your Time Warp to be able to reuse your Reflect and your Debilitate as much as you can. This is why I recommended bringing a tier 90 shield. Defense abilities scale with the level of your shield and it's going to be very important. Having Turtling 4 on the shield will also be really useful if you need to use an emergency barrier. Arcade. Now, keep in mind, everything you do can be reused with Time Warp. This is going to take practice. It is definitely going to take practice. But once you do this, you can survive very easily by using your defensives twice and using them in the right way. Once you finish off killing the third Carapac clone, you want to head over to Carapac himself, drop another vulnerability bomb, use your Time Warp, do as much damage as you can, and use whatever defensives it takes to kill him. Once you've killed off that Carapac, the fight is completed. Now, I can only tell you the actual way to go through Phase 4, the goals that you want to do, and what I do while I'm doing this. There's not much I can do on telling you the exact rotation of defensives because you may get hit more often, you may get hit less often. You're going to have to decide this on the fly. It is what it is. The main thing still works the same jump into the first clone, use Vitality Potion, jump to the second clone, walk in between two of the Carapac clones, use Time Warp and Sunshine, and then get them both down to low health. Use Time Warp again and Devotion, and then kill both of these two clones to extend your Devotion. Head over to the third one, and then using Time Warp and whatever defensives you need to use, kill the third one off as well. And then make your way to Carapac, keep using your Time Warp ability, keep using as much damage as you can and your defensives to stay alive, and kill off Carapac as fast as you can before he kills you. That is the basic idea of phase four but you are going to want to do things like taking advantage of using time warp and reflect and debilitate using revenge if you're camping a shield and using vulnerability bombs drinking spiritual prayer potions to make sure your Ripidemon does as much damage as possible to get yourself through this phase as quick as possible you could bring a yak but you are going to be eating the entire time you're likely just going to stand there eating doing not much damage whatsoever the Ripidemon helps you get through these three clones very quickly it is worth mentioning that resonance is insanely good here as Carapac hits really high. If you can use Resonance and take your prayers off, you are going to get a massive heal. Guys, phase four is difficult. It is going to take time. It's going to take practice. There are other methods of doing it. This is the one that I do and that seems to work for me just fine. So that is the one I'm going to be teaching you. And like I say, it is just going to be down to you to decide when to use Reflect, when to use Debilitate, but make sure you are extending your devotion by killing those two clones. It is very important. Other than that though, hopefully this guide has helped you get through phase four as well and and it has got you a kill. If it has, then hey, congratulations, and I hope to hell that you do get some Staff of Armadale pieces unlike myself. If this video has helped you out and you have learned some stuff, then please do leave a like. It is currently 2 a.m. I have been up very late making this video and it has taken a hell of a long time, but I hope that has helped and I really, really do hope that you did get through this without maybe ripping out too many hairs on your head. That being said, if you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Congratulations on killing Carapac. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments down below or join my Discord. There's a link in the description. Send me a DM. They're always open. Ask questions in the discord people will answer as much as they can it is always welcome for questions other than that i'll catch you all in the next one see you later guys bye